Okay, let's roll. It's my pleasure to introduce Frederick, a 1949 Ford F1. We first met in 2012 when I came across him on a ranch east of Great Falls. Complete with a flathead V8 engine and non-synchro mesh four-speed transmission, he's exactly the model my granddad used to drive. Named Frederick in granddad's honor and rusty and mouse infested though he was, I couldn't wait to begin the renovation challenge. I hired out the engine rebuild, the upholstery and paint and still the job took more than four years. So I stripped Frederick to the frame, then replaced all the worn out parts to original factory standard, no frills and no enhancements. And I watched with wonder as Jeff passionately toiling away built a car. How does an ordinary man do that? <laughs> Once roadworthy, we regularly drove to town, encouraging interested people to experience Frederick hands-on. And the hankering for a long test drive grew and grew. Route 66, coast to coast, our imagination soared until we settled on a circular tour within Montana. Our goal was to test our simple vehicle on a prolonged mixed terrain journey to live plainly, listen mindfully, and observe thoroughly. Our concerns would Frederick remain mechanically sound? Could we tolerate the pace and noise of the 1949 ride? We prioritized our gear to fit Frederick's limited cargo space, then drafted a rough directional plan from unique destinations as recommended by friends, but set no itinerary. So in September 2019, the red truck road trip began. En route, Frederick developed a real personality, drawing big waves and wide grins, and as in Bonner here with this 2019 Ford, he was photographed by everyone. In Frederick's presence, strangers overlooked our differences, and as one observer put it, a baby will unite people unconditionally, and that truck will too. <laughs> we experience kindness everywhere and a strong sense of community, meeting people of diverse lifestyles and fortunes. Their stories, awakened by Frederick, reflected familiar hopes and fears. With a mutual willingness to listen and understand, we were shown wounds, both figurative and fleshy, yet together we laughed. And the majority of our time happened to fall with agricultural folk, learning a little of what it means to steward the land and animals they love, of drought, fire, flood, and low crop yields or calf prices, of public perspectives and shifting realities. The September weather was unexpectedly cold and wet. Frederick soon forgot his heated garage on inclement days experiments. experience. He excelled, he excelled on muddy roads, easily transporting us and our 500 pounds of gear. The tent stood up too, keeping us dry through snow, gales, rain, and flood. Cold nights regularly gifted us 10 hours sleep, plus another reason to snuggle close. <laughs> Breathing deeply of the evening breeze, watching slow shifting shadows on the tent roof, we surrendered the excitements of the day and in our gossamer cell, just one stitch away from nature, fell asleep. Riding in Frederick is delightful. High on the deep sprung bench seat, we bounce along in rhythm with the engine. The leg room is good, the heater's efficient, the steering wheel's huge, the mirrors and wipers are tiny. Sometimes the gas gauge works and double clutching keeps us from guiding the gears mostly. Frederick took us to wild and hidden places, mountains and plains, where nature kisses the senses and wildlife communes, where we reconnected with the outside that's inside us all. Camping enhanced the experience, sleeping, cooking, eating, fresh outdoors each day and observing all the necessary disciplines. Because once in storm-driven haste, I blew off the everything in its place rule, temporarily stowing five wooden clothespins in the pea bucket. Forgetting and using the commode during the night resulted to the loss of, to incineration of some powerfully marinated pegs. <laughs> Our days were varied and stimulating. At once, natural phenomena contrasting with man's technological achievement from agriculture to mines. And at historic places like the Big Hole Battlefield, we heard from the living and the dead. 
and we stood in awe of an incredible capacity for human endurance. Meanwhile, looking for new experiences, here in Glasgow, Jeff went for his first straight razor shave. The lady barber did a fine job and he emerged totally relaxed in a cloud of very strong cologne. We don't know whether either condition factored, but once back behind the wheel, Frederick wouldn't start. This, the only mechanical issue of the entire trip, had happened a couple of times previously, sometimes involving the wiper shutting off in the upright position. This time, the problem seemed more permanent, but a bump start sufficed, and I didn't have to pull the starter in a rainstorm. Serene as we were here in the Bear Paws, it was hard to conceive of the historic snowstorm that was forecast. But regular life beckoned, and at Jordan, we were obliged to continue west. The decision to end the trip in two days' time just about broke our hearts. So, Frederick carried us for 22 days, 2,000 miles through 28 counties. We never went on the interstate, averaging 12 miles per gallon at 55 miles per hour. His performance was exemplary. <laughs> Incidentally, I solved Frederick's non-starting problem in Lewiston by changing the starter solenoid. We visited but a portion of Montana, yet we were privileged to sit amongst her splendor and appreciate our neighbors. We returned revitalized, peaceful, and optimistic, hearts swollen with love for Frederick and each other. And in the words of one longtime rancher, well, well now, now, ain't, ain't that, that something? something.